You are watching the YouTube video for the Roar and Peacocks Youth Podcast. This is episode number 13. We're going to talk about lots of news that's happened over the last couple of weeks. And also uh, we're going to focus on some of our lone players out all around the country and all around the world in some cases. So if you're one of our subscribers, thank you. We're over a thousand now. We can start getting some money for this. Make sure you watch all the adverts. They're great. Um, but yeah, <laughs> make sure you leave a comment below on how much you enjoyed this episode and anything you want to talk about in future episodes. So let's get right into the show. The following podcast contains some strong language and some very average opinions. Any references to actual people are wildly inaccurate. It's probably best if you don't listen at all. The Roaring Peacock Podcast. Welcome back to the Roar and Peacock Youth Podcast, episode number, I think it's 13. I said 13 in the little YouTube thing before. If it's not 13, then sorry, it's something. Um, I'm your host, Ross, and with me as ever is Rob. Hello. And Matty. Hello, everybody. How you doing, boys? It's been a long couple of weeks, isn't it? We've been away for a little bit. We're back. It has, yeah. It has, yeah. And in that Mess time, obviously, bomb. the thousand subscribers as well. So on we go from here. Thank you to everybody who's subscribed and watching now. So, yeah. Onwards and upwards. If you are that one dickhead that is uh, not liking our videos, putting the thumbs down every time, please stop. Just go away. <laughs> go find someone else's videos to do that too. <laughs> we don't need you here. Um, but anyway, Rob, we've got a busy show. I mean, you've been uh, squirreling away with your notes um, like a little mad beaver. You've got news, loads and loads of news for us to do. And you've also got a comprehensive loan um, watch roundup of all the players we've got out on loan. So I'm gonna, basically just going to hand the show over to you. And then me and Matt, you're just going to sit back and in awe of it basically <laughs> wow no pressure then I've got some <laughs> ill orchestrated statistics and things that I've borrowed from various websites and Twitter is what you mean but that's what, that's what um, podcasts are that's fine I have been um, I have been uh, squirreling the old um, stats and news and tidbits that have come through because although there's been no actual football to watch from a Leeds perspective um, there's still been quite a little bit happening around uh, the 23s youth in general so yeah I think a good place to start was something that right at the start of the international break I saw which was tweeted out by um, a, a Twitter account that we all usually follow is LUFC data yes. which really impressed me was the uh, statistic that Marcello Bielsa has given more minutes to players under 22 than any other Premier League manager this season and that's 5,043 Wow. Chelsea lead the uh, lead with the most minutes. Um, no, that makes no sense. Chelsea lead with the most, yeah, Chelsea lead with the most minutes by under 22 players in the top flight, but Bielsa has been given the most minutes per per, per, um, per player, should I say. Yeah. So he's the one manager on his own that's given the most minutes, which is 5,043. So about 130 behind Chelsea. Um, but Chelsea have done that over two with two managers. So um, oh, right, I see. Yeah, I thought that was Pretty impressive. Um, isn't it? Mm. it is, and broken down by player, uh, Melier is two thousand five hundred, Stroke fifteen hundred and fifteen, Shackleton four hundred and fifty five, Pavetta two hundred and forty six, Roberts two three nine, Huggins thirty seven minutes, and Leif Davis thirty one minutes. And included in that stat is Tyler Roberts, who played two hundred and thirty nine minutes until he turned twenty two on January the twelfth. Wow. There we go. Start I'll be interested that, yeah. to see what the other promoted teams have done with that because it's not the done thing, is it, to have youth as your kind of your go to when you're newly promoted? Our nearest competitor from a newly promoted side was West Brom, who give 3,500 minutes. So almost just under 2,000 minutes, isn't it? Uh, like 1,800 minutes less than us two youth players. We are second behind Chelsea. And then it goes Wolves, Arsenal, Sheffield United. Uh, and then, then this West Brom beard below that, but Fulham are nowhere on that list. I'll be surprised if we don't end up above Chelsea as well, because mm. you know we they've got Champions League to fight for. We've got, you know, we're safe now, and you'd expect the likes of Joffe and maybe Greenwood or Somerville, uh, other other ones that have been pressed in twenty three. You'd expect them to start getting some minutes as well towards the yeah, end of the definitely. season. So I'd be surprised if we don't end up top of that list, which is quite impressive and really does shine a great light on, on our academy and it just it just reflects really well on the club. Yeah, we've said it before, there's no, it, it may be just because we're Leeds fans, we don't see the other side of it from other teams, but there doesn't appear to be other teams that have such a synergy between the two squads. They're, they're yeah. one in the same squad, basically. 
players can flip between either just at, at, at will, basically. It's, it's really good to see. Yeah, no, fantastic. I saw that and I thought, what a great way to kick off the kind of show to, to look at that and just back up what we've said all along, um, which is obviously, like you say, there is a perfect synergy between the, the kind of 18s, 23s and first 11. Yeah. And it, it shows how much quality we're blooding in, um, some of which we're going to talk about that are out, out on loan um, today, but also, as we've we spoke about many times, the, the players that are still with the, the PD in the, the development squad that are coming through and getting Premier League minutes. It's really impressive to see. Mm. Yeah, it's it's good. Well, I love this club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, What's next, Rob? Well, um, some quotations from the gaffer, from uh, Mark Jackson, Ooh. which uh, came from an interview or uh, an article that was posted on the Yorkshire Evening Post about, um, obviously, the, the thing we spoke about on the last episode before the international break, which was that we can win the division without being kicking a ball um, obviously mm. depending on what happens with Stoke as we know we sit 13 points clear at the top um, and uh, Stoke who, uh, who sits second they've got two games in hand uh, but they must win at Crystal Palace on April the 12th which is in four days time depending yeah. on when you're listening depending on when you listen to this um, so Mark Jackson had said um, sort of direct quotation that the, the squad will keep calm, carry on, despite obviously the uh, impressive uh, performances of late. Uh, and I really liked the kind of level-headedness as we spoke about Mark Jackson before. He he's a, comes across as a really well-rounded coach and someone who cares about keeping that synergy that we spoke about. So he put uh, sort of quotations. Uh, it's been a good journey and we're still on it um, after the, the win over West Brom. We've got to go and see it through and, and we can control what we can control. What we can control is our performances and how we approach the games and our mindset to games. We want to win every game we go into. We want to play out, play our way and utilise our philosophy. Ultimately, we go out to win every game and that's what we want to do between now and the end of season. It's a credit to the players to put themselves in the position where they are now. Yeah, fully agree. I mean, he's had a great part to play in it, but yeah, it, it's, 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 not, it's all on the players on the pitch, isn't it? They have to perform, they have to do what they, Jacko's trained them to do and told them to do. But yeah, it's... It, yeah, I, you wouldn't expect to drop in performances, really. No, you know, and the, I think it's players the are, Sorry, no, I was just going to say, you know, the players are they're all young and they're still fighting for their place in the first team. It's not like the job is done for them, really. It's almost like the title for the 23s is kind of just a byproduct of them playing well for their own future. It's not mm. obviously it's nice. And it, I'm sure it was a target for the 23s to get promoted because they want to be then tested against Liverpool, Man City and, and those types of teams next season. Yeah. But the the main aim is always to just improve players and individuals and get them ready for the first team. So, yeah, you wouldn't expect to drop in performances even if Stoke do win and Leeds, need, Leeds go into their final three games. I wouldn't expect to drop at all because these are still... Players that are looking to impress Bielsa and get into the first team for the Premier League fixtures. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, Jacko has remained level headed all season and all the players have kept playing well all season. No complacency at all. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, the, the quotes, the quotes are great from Jacko just saying they still need to play how they want to play. So, yeah, I wouldn't have expected anything else either, but obviously, it's good to hear that from Mark and, Obviously, that play that message will have been reinforced to the players as well. So I just can't wait to see him in action again. To be honest, it's been a joy to watch, and you know, going three weeks without watching him is I miss it as much as I did the two weeks without watching the first team. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, yeah. I think it's a credit to Jacko as well. Action. Like it's 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 not an easy task. We've spoke about it. It mustn't be easy. I mean, I'm not a professional coach, so but anyone that's connected to football or played football or looked at football knows that if you interrupt a team of eleven as regularly as is what has to happen with our twenty threes, to coach that and keep that philosophy whilst not just making changes to your coaching schedule, your players that are coming in and out of sessions Monday through you know Friday, for example, um, or in, in the 23s case, the, the games they're not playing. But mm. then you go into that. It's not just then. It's also in the game management of that because you've got a players that have come down from the first team that have got to only play 45. Then you've got to swap it at half time. And we, we spoke about it in microcosms throughout the season and individual performances we've looked at the games I think at the end of the season when we actually look back at that squad management from but not just Jacko but the coaching staff around him and anyone connected to the 23s 
it is a really impressive thing because you've got players coming down and you've got players coming up. Obviously, you've yeah. got we're going to talk about his professional contract signing, but Max Dean and the likes that have come up as well as those that have come down. So that squad has you know into been interwoven, interjected, messed around, kind of uh, pieced together each week, full of like a patchwork quilt, and mm. yet to deliver what they've delivered consistently over the season, barring a couple of glitches. Um, it's a credit to, I know, I know Jack is saying it's credit, it's a credit to the players, but my point with this is if he or any of the coaching staff are listening, it's also a credit to them as well, because that's not an easy task to get an 11 to do that. No, not at all. He must have his training plan for the week with the players that he's got. And then he must get told Roberts needs to play 45 minutes. Uh, here he is. He's not trained every week. Here he is. Yeah, playing. exactly. And, <laughs> and also it's... then to, to psychologically break that news to one of these young, hungry lads that's trying to get in the first team, yeah. you know, I'm oh, sorry, mate, you've got to step, I know it's not as easy as this, but you've got to step aside for 45. Calvin needs a go or Kosh yeah. needs a go at CDM whilst we whilst we bring someone back or Cresswell, you're going up to sit on the bench potentially, but it'll be good exposure. And I know it's all a learning perspective and a learning, it's a learning um, curve for all of these lads, but mm. It must not just be easy both on the physical coaching side, the technical aspects and the football side, but also the psychologically of managing these young lads or these teenagers into yeah. breaking their hearts one week and then unleashing them to go and be world beaters the next. It's yeah. credit to the players as well. that, Like you're saying, to be told to not, not mess around. You don't want it to sound like a negative thing because <laughs> ultimately they're learning every single day. And I mean, they're living, they're living everybody's dream, aren't they, playing for yeah. Leeds? But the difficulty is that... It, they you know the manage. It's about how you manage it, and the difficulties could be, you know, players going in a strop because they're not playing. So yeah, it's mm. credit to Jacob, but it's also credit to the lads that are showing great maturity levels, and that's not just we say they're putting some mature performances over the season in the way they see out games, but you know, week by week to to play how they are doing and to have this team change constantly and to not be involved and having to take take things like a professional mm. it's credit to the to the lads but like you say Rob it's about how they manage them so you know Jacko obviously deserves so much credit um, and he's, he's also I say about credit in the players to for how they're growing up and being mature Jacko's played a part in that as well obviously being at the club I think he started in the under 16s then he was 18s and now he's 23 so he's been with these players all along and helped him massively and also he got a, got to mention the team that Jacko has around him and has had around him over the, over those five years which has obviously changed yeah. a lot the psychologists I mean I'm, I couldn't tell you anybody's name which is <laughs> which is you know well we've Paul, actually I'm got saying some... we need to big them up but <laughs> yeah. oh, no they, I was going to say we've they actually don't get got credit, some do they? No, that's a perfect no, segue. We, we spoke about was it was it was it the podcast before last? We spoke about the um, player welfare um, people that had come on to do the the, the talk with marching out together, which was really interesting. Mm. But whilst you mentioned it, um, uh, Matty, I did want to shout out for anyone that isn't really follows the under twenty threes as in depth as some of us might. Um, a couple of changes to the coaching roles that have happened actually yeah. whilst whilst we've got the opportunity, which was um, we've signed. I saw through a training ground guru. So shout out to them um i follow them on twitter they seem to be um you know a, a reliable account to follow but yeah. we've signed uh, johnny madden um from middlesbrough as a academy physical development coach and he was at borough for nine and a half years so you know he's joined the team which has meant that rob etherington has moved from that role at leeds the academy physical development role into a coaching role with the 18s so there are movements happening still within that coaching staff and like you said i i I think they all deserve praise. I wish I could have named like you some more of them by name. I yeah, can't, yeah, yeah. but I've started to, to watch what's going on with these coaching because some of them, some of them in their own right will have bright futures in the game mm. as a coach. It's the same with the first team coaches. I've got no idea who any of those guys are. They just stand there and shout at the players on the sidelines, but <laughs> they, they do, they must do incredible work throughout the week because Bills is not doing all this on his own. And it's the same with Jacko. Yeah. He's got what 25 players to, to work with. He can't do it all on his own. He's got a, a great staff around him and it's good to see that they're, Adding to that as well with, with other experience from other areas as well, other clubs. Yeah, no, it'd I be mean, good. It'd be... We just can't say a bad word about them, really, can we? <laughs> I bet pe people probably get fed up. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't seem very journalistic. Just having nothing bad to say and not, you know, not weighing up any negatives or anything. 
I but mean, there aren't any, are there? It's been a pretty perfect <laughs> well, season. Luckily, I'm not paid to be a journalist. The, club, <laughs> the state of the club is just, you know, it's in one of the best positions it's ever been in, from first yeah. team to academy level. So, yeah, we don't have anything bad to say. Really. <laughs> for, Things have been going pretty perfectly. Yeah. To keep things interesting, you know, and the content non-stale for us just praising them, maybe they might go and lose a couple of games. I don't know. Oh God, I can't I'm not predicting any one alls again, <laughs> put it that way. Now that the first team is safe, it's up to 23, is it, to put the pressure on? Yeah. <laughs> what about Max Dean? He looked thrilled to sign his new deal, didn't he? He did. <laughs> Absolutely. Smiles all around. I think he made a joke about it, didn't he? He looked yeah. literally... Yeah, yeah. Bored to death. <laughs> there's, our, there's our bit of negativity. There's, yeah, there you if go. I have one complaint, Max. Come on, Max, cheer up a bit. Mate. Come on, cheer up. <laughs> Give us He's a smile. He's been injured, hasn't he? Maybe that's it. Maybe mm. we'll let him off. He's been injured. Yeah. Have you got any details on his uh, his new contract? How long it is? So... Um, I'll have a look. The professional contract when it he signed the other yeah. week. I've just got the information up here. So it's a two year deal till summer of 2023. Um, so that'll take him till he's 19, the moment, and then I'm guessing um, the we'll look to. It's his first professional contact uh, contract, and obviously we all hope, like we do with a lot of these lads that we speak about, that he will go on to be the next Calvin, or you know, get into that first team squad, or even in the next few years, if he just does his thing in the PL2 Division One, mm. you know, as well as been with the mixing it with the 18s uh, as well when he needs to. I think, depending on what they do with that. Um, oh, Papa John trophy. Uh, they change its name all the time, <laughs> yeah, don't they? But, you know, if, you. If, if, if he could get some minutes in that again next year, if we can do a bit better and progress a bit with that, that might be good for him. He did um, score and, two goals in there, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, but, another good opportunity. Hopefully we do better in that next season. Yeah, it um, would have been nice to have seen us. That's an yeah, active point for you there. There we go. There we are. <laughs> it's not the Here 23s are, per se, but yeah, there we go. God, all we do is moan on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think what that professional contract does is just stops him being able to just be poached by one of the supposed bigger boys in the PR1, doesn't it? That yeah. yeah. They're going to have to pay us money if they want him now rather than just him walking away, which I don't think he would do. He took a chance coming down to Leeds from Everton and it, yeah. it's paid off massively. Speaking of poaching, PSG, obviously, I've seen lots of activity on clickbait Twitter with yeah. PSG being linked to Meslier, but I did want to mention something that I saw in the Telegraph where our young French goalkeeper, as well as romancing Dembele out of Barcelona for us and bringing him over, <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to, bringing him signed, signed Patrick Bamford shirts over to, to Bar- I'm not Barcelona sure I even want him after that Champions League, <laughs> that Champions I, League performance. Yeah. I did read that Meslier has picked up rank number 29, so it sounds quite low, but uh, he's, they've put him in the top 30 brightest young talents of the whole of Europe. That's crazy. Uh, Were there any right other now. goalkeepers on the list, Rob? I am interest. uncertain. I am uncertain. No, he was the only it's goalkeeper. Not, no, he was. Not, he was the yeah, only. Yeah, I mean that's. Out. It's pretty rare for a goalkeeper to make a list like that. I mean, I'm guilty of it myself. I've done some lists before, and you just forget. You just forget about goalkeepers. But yeah, yeah he was the only yeah, keeper. Really, definitely. That's really insane, good familiar to be put on that. Five million pounds. Absolute what? bargain. That is. <laughs> That's mad, yeah. isn't it? That's I, absolutely. I don't crazy. want him to be sold, but I, I, I do keep thinking to myself. I wonder what we could, what we could sell him for. Yeah. You look at Pick. I mean, Pickford went for thirty million. <laughs> So, he's at least twice as good as Pickford. Yeah, I mean, you, I'd just I wouldn't be... want to sell him. I think he's got the capabilities of doing what that young lad over at AC Milan's done and solidify his Donnarumma, first place. Yeah. yeah, solidify his place as, as, as number one goalie for years to come. Um, the, the other players, some of the other players on that list are like Erling Haaland and Jaden Sancho and Phil Foden. Yeah. So just look, we. There's a Leeds player yeah. mixing in with those boys. That, yeah. That's crazy. And a young Leeds player, like, you know, with more years of head, years talent of ahead of him. And we know he's not a, ra- a fully rounded goalkeeper yet. He's so young. So to be doing what he's doing, he's broken clean sheet records, isn't he? Or equal to clean sheet records yeah. in the Premier League so far. I'm excited by him. I, I said when he came in um, last season, for we well, you know the reasons why, but when he came in, uh, and, you know, he's not the finished article, but he's so exciting, isn't he? He's a talent. I don't think I've ever been so excited by a goalkeeper. Yeah, same here, yeah. He just doesn't give me any sort of fear. Even if we can see the goal, you think, well, he probably could have done better with that. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't care, does he? He just thinks, well, I'll just stop that next time and I'll make a great save in a minute. <laughs> I'll pick that one up next. He's not erratic. He's, he's, 
he's pretty calm. He's good in, good in possession. He's a good shot stopper. Yeah. I haven't felt this secure since Nigel Martin, basically. He's the last keeper that I felt uh, it's probably, probably secure. The, yeah, it's the most secure I've ever felt in, in a goalkeeper. I mean, yeah. Martin was just before my time, so the goalkeepers since then don't yeah, even, some, they're some, not even worth some talking characters. about, really. But yeah, yeah. I mean, Melly is probably the most secure goalkeeper I've ever seen. He's 19 years old. Bit gutted he's not getting in the France under 21s team. I can't say. Yeah, he's kept so, off kept off the first eleven, were not he? Yeah, Le, uh, Lafont is the yeah. first team goalkeeper. I think he plays for Nantes. In, They've got in some very French, good young keepers. France. France. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's a bit disappointing that he's not been given some minutes because mm. you know that'd be another another place for him to improve. Because I think in future he's got to be. He's got. He must have his eyes on that France and Born uh, jersey. I mean, Lloris has only got a few years left in him. Yeah. And if, I think Lloris is Lloris even in the one at the minute. Is it Ariola? I'm not sure. It might be. Yeah, I mean, a they've got, a, they've got a lot of they've got a lot of good goalkeepers. So if Melier can Melier can get that jersey, then it'd be mm. massive for him. Massive for us. Uh, increase his stock a little bit more as well. If we ever do come to selling him for yeah. three times whatever the other <laughs> <was worth. laughs> the first least, hundred million yeah. pound goalkeeper. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. helps that he's got arms longer than a child, so he's already got a one up <laughs> on Pickford, really, hasn't he? And the deepest voice of any human being possible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> His voice is mental. <laughs> Unexpected <laughs> voice. Oh, God, we'd need I'd love all, all sorts pod. of filters on that. <laughs> Donnie will be changing the audio settings for the bass. <laughs> like, <laughs> Blowing speakers all over. Uh, what's next, Rob? What we got? Uh, the last kind of thing before the loan watch, I guess, where we we'll have a little look at some of the loan players, just a little tidbit, obviously, about Mr. Gelhart. So uh, nominated for March's PL2 Player of the Month, which was was well justified, obviously, standout player, amazing performances, was um, a, a really interesting thing that uh, Phil Hay uh, appeared in one of the Phil Hay artic- uh, articles, which is titled, for anyone who has an athletic subscription, Will Marcello Bielsa blood in Leeds United or conquer in under-23s? And it was... Looking at the position of someone like Robbie Gops, for example, who made all that string of bench appearances but never made a start, never played any minutes and, and yeah. was on the bench for X amount of games in a row. Um, and he talked about Gelhart and uh, he mentioned that it's rumoured, this is not fact, but that Bielsa was understood to have taken part with Gelhart's agency, um, uh, like on one of the Zoom calls to try and discuss you know, the benefits of him joining the the squad. And one of the things that they talked about and which kind of has happened apparently is the significant weight loss and fitness levels of him moving, obviously, to, to that, to the regime. So again, to be taken with a pinch of salt, I mean, Phil Hay is usually quite accurate with this stuff, but yeah. I just liked that little tidbit on the article because it focused on a few of the kind of Paveda, Tyler Roberts players, which we've mentioned before, uh, and a nice link into loan watches. Are they going to make or break it after we're safe this year? And Bielsa's track record of actually not just giving young players a start for the sake of it. He, he plays them. And we, we talked about 5,000 minutes of youth players playing in his team. So it's not that he, he, he trusts, you know, uh, your, your older squad players. These young players, if they come in and perform, they will keep your Pablo Hernandez and so on on the bench and they will get the minutes. Um, yeah. However, with your Gelharts and your Greenwoods and the people we keep waxing lyrical about at this level on this podcast, it's that age old question is, are they ready yet? Will he try them or will we be seeing them in the PL2 Division 1 next year rather than the first 11? Do they need another year and so on? So really interesting article. Any listeners, I would recommend you read it. It's a, it's a fantastic read. Yeah, definitely. Um, what's next, Rob? We're going on to our loan watch. Oh, I think so. I Ooh. think we can go through... Because there's there's a lot of tidbits here about some of the lads. Unfortunately, some good news. You look at your McCalmots and so on. And then, mm. unfortunately, for people like Bryce, some not so good news. So, yeah, we start potentially with Bryce. Watch. We start with that one. Yeah, if you wish. Yeah, let's start with Bryce because it's a shame what's happened. Such he's a, a, shame. Yeah, yeah, such a shame. One of the brightest yeah. prospects we had. And, yeah, he's a, suffered a massive injury, it seems. Yeah, he's back, obviously, at Leeds. Uh, he did make an instant impact. We spoke about it in the last loan watch. Um, he got the man of the match in his debut over at Bradford. Mm. Um, but since December, really, he's been kind of cropped with his injury. The hamstring ruled him out 
ever since then. And I think they they finally made the decision. There were some pictures of him, although um, it's a negative story in the sense that he's injured again. Um, uh, he's, his, this is a direct quote from Bryce himself on his Twitter account. After a nightmare few months, hopefully a solution to the problem. Looking forward to coming back stronger and start the next season. And he looked on the, as well as a man can look in a hospital bed, he looked, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, you know, not too shabby. So I wish him all the best, obviously, and hope he gets recovered this summer to be able to make an impact next year because he's a good lad. Yeah, definitely. Who to next? Might even be, as daft as it sounds, it might be a good time to have that injury because if he, you know, towards the end of the season now, if he can rest up, he might mm. get back for a full pre-season, which then yeah. means he can almost start fresh <clears> next season and, and go again, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully he can recover because he was top top quality for the twenty threes. Start yeah. drill at Bradford. And you know, he could that could be a really healthy bit of competition for Drama. I would love to see those two battle it for a a right back slot. I think that'd yeah. be great. Because I think Drama, without criticizing too much, I think a couple of his performances I think you could argue he looks a little bit complacent. Where he's he's you know, I think to be fair for me he's been the most consistent performer all year, but I think a couple of just the slack performances, I feel like they won't happen if you had someone really pushing him for a right back slot because he's, yeah. he's the only one in the in the twenty three. Huggins can play there, but he's played the majority of the time at left back. Mm. Drama and Hosanna, two top players yeah. for that level, pushing each other could be really interesting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. No, next so McCalma, I think, is a good place, a success oh, yeah. story of the loan watch. You know, we spoke about how well his loan was going last time. Just a few bits of stats, um, and then I'll let you lads praise him to the high hilt because he's doing well over at Oldham. Uh, obviously, they they changed managers, uh, got rid of uh, Keogh Broad and Keith Kale, um, and he scored three goals in his last four games. In total, that's 31 appearances for Oldham. So 2,300 minutes under his belt, which is, you know, good for a, a lad out on loan. Yeah. Productive season, obviously eight goals in total, two assists from midfield. So um, he's having a right old time over at Oldham. And I think yeah. he's he's proving that he's a bit of a class above, no offence to those lads, yeah. but he's proving that he's the star man of that team, I think. Yeah, that goal he scored the other week. Uh, the volley. The side foot volley straight from a corner off the crossbar. Mm. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I'm all I've definitely that. plugged this before, but uh, I have an I have a interview on my website with a lad that works for Oldham. So if you want to hear more and more about McCalmont, then go give that a watch. My mate says uh, he's not just my mate; he works for Oldham. Yeah. Uh, he says he's a, a real class above talent wise, uh, and he's been getting used to the physicality of the season. And it must be said those numbers: ten contributions in in just over thirty games. For what is it? Is he twenty? I think. And his yeah. either way, in his first yeah. professional season from midfield in a team yeah. that was struggling at the start, they had a yeah. shocking start. It looked like they were going to go down at one point, and they picked up a little bit. Uh, the Harry Kuhl effect. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, not in a good team, and in his first season, I think those numbers really are impressive and. Maybe he's given Marcelo a little bit of a different perspective because he was playing a lot as a number four and I think mm. his ability to score goals has got to got to kind of maybe change his thinking. I know he I know he wants his players to be able to play more than one position, but I think Alfie now we might see as predominantly a number eight rather than predominantly a number four. Yeah. 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 I mean Click hasn't scored any volleys from corners recently, so <laughs> <laughs> some pressure on him. <laughs> from uh-huh. Alfie. Yeah, I like him. I think he's a really, really good prospect. He's already an international footballer at, what, 19 yeah. years old, two years ago when he yeah. got capped. So, yeah, he's got some talent. And, yeah, I'd like to see him with the first team next season, hopefully getting a few appearances was, and yeah. seeing where he goes from there. But, yeah, a good one. Yeah. Who's your next, Rob? So, um, on to Robbie Gotts, um, which, uh, again, I think has been a successful loan, but I'm going to caveat that because I think the step down to League Two from where he was before at Lincoln is actually... He, he, Robbie's not shone as much, but but also mm. that could be to, to do with the fact in his defence, Salford have changed their manager twice, haven't they? Or yeah, you know, since he's joined. So they're going for a bit of a calamity. So he might not have found his rhythm there. But all in all, as a season, I mean, we spoke about him in January when we did the first loan watch. His first loan with Lincoln was um, 
12 appearances in 21, I think it was. He, he was performing well. Goal, I think, a goal of the month, didn't he, as well, when he moved over mm. to Salford at first. And, and then, but since February, it's kind of, he's played a lot. I, play, I think he's played 13 out of 14, but with Salford becoming a bit of a, you know, calamity, like you've said, I think mm. he's not found a rhythm there, but still, he's getting minutes, important minutes. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Robbie Gotts is doing all right. I can't remember if you if you played in that Johnson's Paint Trophy final, or whatever it's called. It now. wasn't. It wasn't allowed to. Oh, was he not? Okay. It was the final from last yeah, season. Last year. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. last year. So I feel. I, I don't know. I, I did message him about it, and he said something about not being allowed to play. I can't remember the reason now, but oh, right, he wasn't okay. allowed to play, which is a real shame. It's a shame, yeah, because I got a game at Wembley. Hopefully, he can continue getting those minutes <laughs> in the end of the season. I think. Uh, him and Alfie, I think if they're not looking at being on the bench next season, if they're not being considered, I think they've got to be in the championship for me. Yeah. Um, just personally. Yeah, definitely. They need to be in the championship. And I think they've both done enough as well in, in both their loans. I think they've both done enough to, to warrant that. That's what's, um, what's Robbie's best position? Because he's, play, he's played everywhere, only through the midfield and at right back as well. If he was to play for the first team now, I think the right back. But yeah. Give it a year or so. I think he. I'm, I'm not sure. I've, I've seen him play both, and the thing is, he's actually spot on in both positions. So I yeah. can't really, I can't really pick between the two. But it's tricky. I mean. Uh, again, maybe not everyone's favourite opinion, but would you put him in front of the right backs that we've got that are not on loan? Yeah. At the minute, in development, I well, I mean, he, he's certainly got more of a physical aspect, I think, and he's got a more potentially argue more minutes against a well-rounded op- opposition. Um, so I don't mean that, but I mean we spoke about the natural progression of obviously Drame and potentially, you know, um, how he might progress up to replace <clears throat> Aylin in the in the end or whatnot. But I don't know. I think I've got a feeling it's make or break for Robbie with Leeds if he if he next season. Um, well, he also moved into a central midfield, didn't he? He's got yeah. a little. Bit I think of... they'll be patient. I think they'll be patient with him. I'm not. I'm not sure it's make or break just yet. Um, yeah. oh, that's good. Obviously, I'm not saying he's going to be uh, replacing Aylin anytime soon, but. I think I'd have him ahead of Drama. I think he's got a couple of years on him. Mm. He's had that. He's had that year out on loan. I think he'd be if he came back to Leeds and he was within the first team squad. I think he would be above Drama. Yeah. But then Fair I mean, enough. you look at the midfield. You've got Click. You've got Shackleton. You've got so many centre midfielders. Lot of, we've got a lot of depth. Um, yeah. So yeah, this is the this is why Marcelo gets paid a lot of money to make to make these decisions. And uh, yeah, but we'll see. I think. Robbie and Alfie, I think if they're not on the bench, they've got to be looking at a championship one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. They're, they're, they're yeah. a step above League One and League Two, definitely. 100%. Who's your next, Rob? So moving on to Bogus, who's, who's actually surprised me with some comments that I, I read. Uh, mm. They were a while ago, actually. I found them recently, but they're from a small time ago because he's obviously over in Spain. Um, yeah. He wasn't doing much last time we, we, we picked it up, but since then he's kind of played 18 times. So he's got... 840 minutes of experience and he's been playing in the Copa del Rey against, um, I think, the, on the Leeds United site, the, the teams were Mallorca, Malaga, Espanyol. So he's not playing Mickey Mouse opposition, let's no, say. Decent teams. Um, but the team he's with, Lagrones, are doing quite poor. They're 17th in the league. So again, it's is that level too low for him? We don't know. But Bogus himself has come out with some comments and I'm going to paraphrase because I've close down the quote on my phone unfortunately in my notes but um, it basically was around the fact that he feels he needs to be out on loan again next season and doesn't feel as though he's ready uh, to be a Premier League player yet as in the standard that he's at so right. he is he another one that is going to Spanish we spoke about it in January but is going out to Spain good for his development should we potentially look to bring him into English football tier system and loan him out so that he can you know get a feel for how the English game operates rather than Spanish Division 2 you know mm. uh, maybe just my opinion but I yeah. think he'd be better better suited going on loan in England rather than over to Spain but there could have been work permit reasons for that or personal preferences from the player we don't know but it looks as though the intention from Bogus' side is that he wants to be out on loan again next season I agree. Obviously, we don't know, but I agree with you, Rob. I think he has to be in England. I really don't see the point in loaning players out to Spanish second tier. Um, yeah. It'd be different yeah. if it was Spanish first tier, even, but 
Yeah, I found that a strange one where he went. I know we have relationships with with clubs, or it might be something to do with an agent or anything like that. But or you know, Bogus himself might want to go there. But for me, he's got to be in the English system. And even in even if he six about in the twenty ones again next year, I'm not sure if yeah. that's seen as a step back going out on loan and then coming back to the twenty ones. I'm not I'm not really sure. But I think if the twenty ones are getting promoted, I mean, put it this way: is he going to be playing against better players in? Exactly. The Division One or the Spanish Second Division. Yeah. I mean, for me, I'd say I've... it was play. I'd say playing against the likes of Man City and Liverpool's youth side were just as good as, if not better, playing against Spanish Second Division teams. Yeah. And I think that's the one thing that that we look at grassroots football of a much lower level and the way that the pyramid is built in English football, and it's got its complexities, it's got its issues from non-league to professional level. But I think that's one really good thing that they've done with the PL2 having this division one, division two set up. And when you, when you have the right standard of Academy, like we have now, I think some of the opposition that we're playing, even in the current division we're in, we spoke about it. Sometimes it's, you know, we've, we've kind of walked this league, we keep saying and so on, but you know, sometimes the opposition is, is of a decent level. And I would argue that definitely next year, the caliber, I agree with you completely, Matty, the caliber of people he's likely to play next year probably are going to be better than, you know, Real Zaragoza's cup team. Um, Tactically as well. Yeah. Like it's yeah. not just, it's not just physically, it's not just mentally or technically, it's tactically, the teams in the PL2 Division 1, if he's going to be built and become a Premier League player for us, which is obviously the ultimate aim, why he should be in England playing tactically similar to how other yeah. teams in England set up what <laughs> what use is the second Spanish division yeah, yeah. I just find that a really really strange one I mean if someone could explain that to me and you know the benefits of it I'm all ears but you know just on the face of it I've never really understood that and I think it would be much better off being either on loan in League 1 Championship or in the under 23s yeah. at Leeds which I think Personally, for me, I think for Bogus, I think the 23s would be the best place for him next season because even yeah. before he went out on loan, I didn't think he looked up to scratch. I'm not sure if that's before because he knew he was going out on loan, but he played a couple of games just before he went out and he was by far, he was way off the pace for me yeah. anyway. I thought it, yeah. it didn't really impact the games and for someone who'd made his debut in the championship and played in the cup, I thought he should have been doing a lot better. So yeah, maybe, maybe in the 23s for Bogus, I think next year. Yeah, Bielsa obviously likes him, giving him that cap against Charlton and he's been around the first team squad a bit last season as well. So He's a talented player, no doubt he about is. that. I yeah. don't want to criticise him too much. I'm just saying that yeah. what I think is best for him. But yeah, obviously a talented lad. Um, mm. He scored that goal for us in Australia, didn't he? I mean, like you say, Ross, Bielsa clearly likes him. Yeah. So, yeah. I just don't again, get I don't want to Spanish say he's make division. or break. Yeah. I agree. I just don't get the Spanish second division move. Again, there's got to be a reason. There's, yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. Cons- Considering a lot of the other talent um, has gone to domestic League One, League Two level, um, except basically him and Kun, really. Yeah. And, mm. um, you know, I just don't see that. Um, yeah, I right, know it's cool. So, um, Jules Stevens. So, is another lad, obviously, that is out and, and had a, a dual loan situation going on where we've taken him from one club and loaned him to two this season. So his first part of the season, for those that maybe didn't catch the podcast or weren't, weren't aware, 15 appearances um, over at Swindon. And then he came back and then we sent him up to Bradford, uh, another player that's gone up to Bradford. Um, he's been in and out of the squad, from what I understand. I've got a friend who's a Bradford fan who said he's not really a stalwart of the team. He's kind of in and out. But um, he's played 14... No, sorry, that's the wrong way around. Wrong way around. He moved to Bradford. There was talk of him being in and out of the squad. He's been in 14 of the match day squads because I've not seen these stats, but he's not played every game. So yeah. there's kind of like a mixed feeling about him as a player up at Bradford, which, you know, um, they're still hunting down. They're in the top half. They're still yeah, doing they're all right. So right I, I just don't think he's been given the minutes up there. But again, I could be widely inaccurate with that because I haven't seen much of Stevens. But yeah, there was talk of him being in and out of the squad. So... He's another one sure. I think would yeah, learn more so being, being with the kids. He'd be, he'd be better with us currently because I, I liked him when I seen him. I saw him. He played quite a bit for the first team last season, didn't he? A couple of uh, loan, uh, sub appearances and stuff. And he looked, there's the makings of a really good, tricky, yeah. tall winger. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't know what he's going to be learning at Bradford that he couldn't be learning from uh, 
playing with our boys in our youth. To Easter. Especially when he's only on the bench at Bradford as well. That's the frustrating yeah, thing. That's the waste you know, of time. You know, you see people like Gotts and McCallum who are playing. You yeah. wouldn't, you wouldn't say, oh, they, oh, they should be with the twenty threes. They might as well be with the twenty threes. Yeah. Because they're playing and they're getting that, the physical side of it and learning things like that and playing every single week. That's a skill in itself, you know. Yeah. I think he's getting um, playing through knocks and things like that. Um. Yeah, you would never say they're better off with the twenty threes, but people like Stevens who are not playing. Mm. Logan shoes out in Spain. Uh, it's been a frustrating one, I think, for Stevens. I think he started all right at Swindon, and then uh, they, I think yeah. they're struggling out there in, in League One. Yeah, they're getting relegated. Yeah, and then yeah. Bradford were, Bradford have been struggling, and then got on a good run, so he couldn't get in the team because they weren't obviously not going to change a winning team. And then, yeah, just a fr- just a frustrating one, really. Interesting yeah. to see where what happens with him next season. I would presume another. Another league, league one or league two loan. I still have hope for him. He was a, a, a good young player, I thought, last year when he made his first team appearances. So, yeah, we'll see how he gets on. Who's next, Rob? Yeah, another one that's gone maybe not the way people thought after the first loan. So, it's another dual loan. This is Edmondston, obviously, who mm. spent some time up in Scotland and obviously was doing all right for Aberdeen. Um, he played against Rangers. He... Um, he missed us some games, didn't he? And then injury was yeah. it, and then he came back to us. But, you know, he went to Northampton, and I just feel a bit sorry for the lad because, you know, they're 20th in the league, I think. Yeah. They, they look they look poor from what I understand. Um, they, Lowest their, their goal results, scorers, I think. Yeah, their results so, are terrible. Yeah. It's, 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 it's not going to work. He's not... For me, that's not developing the player. But of course, when you when we loan these players out, we don't know yeah. the fortunes of what that club's going to do. But they're another one that they sacked. Was it? I think weirdly, didn't they sack Keith Curl, who's now gone to Salford, who has yeah. obviously <laughs> the other lads on loan. So it's yeah, a bit of a weird Oldham, yeah. scenario. Okay. Yeah. So Oldham, sorry. Um, yeah. and he's got one of our lads on loan. So <laughs> it's all a bit inbred in League One and League Two. We need to get these lads <laughs> back home. Bring them home. Away from this, aren't you? That's got to be the title. It's all a bit inbred in League One and Two. <laughs> inbred in league. We've, been, we've been down there, lads. We know what League One's like. <laughs> no. <laughs> never again. I That's never the title. Don't even make that the title. <laughs> I never really got the clamour for Edmondson. I don't know if it was just me, but he scored a lot of goals in the youth teams. But I, I don't know. When people are saying, "Oh, you should play Edmondson instead of Bamford." No, I think there was a point. I I was I was of that opinion at, at a point yeah. when Bamford was really struggling and Edmondson was firing him in for the twenty threes. I just think Edmondson is a real poacher, mm. and he was he's a big lad. He'll he will run the channel. He will hold the ball up, and he's a poacher. If you know, if the ball drops through in the box, I would have back. I would back him to put it in. And there was a point where, I, in my head, I thought, you know, if we're getting these chances, I just feel like some of them, if they'd have dropped to Edmondson instead of dropping to Bamford, I think it would have been in the back of the net. Yeah. Obviously, I've been proved massively wrong. Bamford's <laughs> gone on, gone on to yeah. unreal heights that no one really saw in him. No, and Edmondson's all. kind of gone the other way, you know. I think that just was his chance and Bielsa didn't quite have that faith in him for whatever reason. The run that Bamford was on and and Ketia had had left or wasn't mm. fancied or or whatever. And even I think even the season before that, I think there was a there was a run where I think Edmondson could have could have had a case to be in the team. Yeah. And for whatever reason he wasn't quite ready or Bielsa didn't quite have that faith. And I think maybe that was his chance and I can't really see him getting a, another chance now I mean look where we are no. we're in the Premier League and yeah. it's going to have to be another That's another. it's another one that's going to have to be another loan you look at the players in the 23s that are going to be well above him Joffe Greenwood uh, Tyler Roberts and yeah. then presumably we're going to be looking at another striker maybe if Rodrigo's future is as a number 10 we've only really got Bamford Roberts Skeller I think, yeah, I, I think we'd see someone like striker. Dean or Allen make another appearance before Edmondson does for the oh, first yeah, team. Dean, I mean, but, but, yeah, but an interesting question for you then, lads, and I've got a lot of affinity for some of these young lads, especially the ones, but it's that question, isn't it? Now the PL2 Division 2 is what it is and we can <clears throat> develop and cultivate a squad of these players. Almost when they go out on loan, you know, you don't, you do take your eye off them a little bit and you don't mm. watch them each week and you keep up to date through bits of media and this, that and the other. And I just think... Obviously, Bielsa and the guys will have their scouting and they'll have their in-depth scout reports on him. But sort of if he's if he's going to come back and he's going to have to go back out on loan again, which is nothing wrong with that. That's happened to many players over their careers. Um, 
now we've got your Joffies and your Greenwoods and they seem to be a level above and potentially he's, he's below Max Dean or around the Max Dean level of, you know, in the pecking order, let's say, in terms mm. of the chain of command. Is it worthwhile for him? I don't know as a professional footballer. Do you say, right, I want to move permanently? Yeah. I want to go I and find you. football elsewhere? I, I don't know because he's a tough one, isn't he? Because it's not... It's not to say that loans are bad, but I think the way that the PL2 is developing, it's almost like as a club, not Leeds, not now, and I'm not using these lads as an example, but I'm saying maybe a future model might be we're going to loan people out as a last hurrah, and if they don't perform on the loan, which is not could could be circumstances out there, dream it, um, we're going to bring them back in. And after those competitive minutes, if the PL2 Division 1 players that we've kept in bread know the tact in in the in the uh, interbred within that team and they know the tactics they know the philosophy they are closer to the club because they've stayed at the club for that season yeah where do you go with that i mean that's just me talking out loud do you do you which which player do you favor let's say edmondson goes out and scores five or six goals as a decent season down at northampton um for the rest of the kicks on when, when he comes back where, where do you do you put him back above Joffy and Greenwood? Because I, I wouldn't, for example. No, but... no, no, no. no. I think it's, it the depends on, on obviously it depends on the club and it depends on the longevity of the project. I think as well. You know, Leeds have been on quite quite a journey under Bielsa, whereas you know clubs that are chopping and changing managers all the time, and they've got young players out on loan and in the twenty threes. I think for Edmondson to go out and stay out on loan is better for him because he it, you know he still he still might be in the plans of a long project whereas if players are going out yep. alone and there's managers chopping and changing for the first team then you know they're not getting a look in under any manager I think that's that's different whereas yeah. it's just one manager yep. for at Leeds that Edmondson has not taken you know he's not obviously taken Bielsa's fancy but another manager could come in and think yeah he's, he's above Joffy for me obviously, obviously that's not going to happen but you know, yeah. some managers could prefer Edmondson to Joffe, so you can't. It's just one person's opinion. Depends if on the Edmondson personal circumstances. Leaving, it? Yeah. You know, sure if Edmondson goes was. on to leave, then. <laughs> <laughs> right, we can give him his play. debut. Yeah, he did, yeah. I can bottom give Edmondson his debut, yeah. He'll be a Sheffield United player next season in the Championship. <laughs> yeah, just, in the Championship. <laughs> right, can we probably do better than Bruce we're, almost, well. we're almost at the hour, Rob, so I think there's one more player that you have to talk about, isn't there? Your boy. Well, we got two. We got two, but they're both lads out in Spain that, okay. I mean, what's happening to them again? It's uh, Mujica and obviously Kun. Um, Mujica, just a few quick starts. Terrible loan when he was at Oviedo. He played 50 minutes um, in 23 games. So that's what use is that? He's not wow. developing. He's not. Mm. The scouting report will be half a paragraph. So, yeah. um, <laughs> however, since he's gone to Las Palmas in the second half of the season, um, he's played eight games in a row. But again, you know, you look at the quality, Las Palmas in the Canary Islands, obviously, um, they're in La Liga 2. Yeah, he's playing games there. He's getting minutes there now. But, you know, I'd say that he's had a pretty torrid year out on loan with those two clubs. I don't think there's much that we're going to gain from that. I hope yeah. I'm wrong because I did actually like Muika. And as you all know, I've got a soft spot for Kun. <laughs> um, I just wanted to see him do well after he was banging goals in for fun. I just think he was... I liked... He's like a Stoichkov. I just liked his, like, physicality. His, his yeah, build, I liked his Kun. Goal scoring. But... Yeah, I mean, he's he's doing well over at Real Union. He's played 22 games now, and we did speak in January. He was doing all right. But again, the same the same kind of feeling. He's got 660 minutes, but playing against what, really? No offence to yeah. those kind of clubs, but, you know, Leo, Baracaldo, Laredo, there's a few of those clubs I've, I've actually never even heard of. And I, I, play <laughs> of I play a lot of football managers, so <laughs> yeah. it's just strange. Um, so I don't know. They're doing all right in Segunda B. Will he come back? We've just spoke about, I, I mean, I'd, I'd put him below Edmondson and we've just talked about that list of mm. forwards. I, I think it'll probably become seeing out his contract and leaving on a free. He's due yeah. his end of this year, his contract's up, I think. So um, it's a shame. Didn't work out for him, but wish him well if he does move on. He'll be off to Spain. Yeah, would be surprised to see either of those come back and, and feature at the club. Yeah. Mojica, I can't, I, I think I remember watching him maybe once or twice. I can't really remember much of him. Kun, I actually really liked. I watched him a lot in the 18s yeah. and a few times for the 23s as well. Great touch, powerful shot, good movement, pretty quick. 
you know, a good build. It was only quite small, but, you know, built quite well, could look after the ball. I actually really did like Hunt. I'm not sure what, what's gone wrong. Well, but... under Cobran, uh, he was playing, wasn't he? He was, he was, he was here. He was doing well. Then all of yeah, a sudden, yeah. he just kind of like, he was scoring goals. And then it just kind of like went, oh, he went MIA for a while. Like literally, there was no news, no nothing. He wasn't mm. alone. He was still at the club, but it just went completely quiet. Yeah, he wasn't getting that, minutes. Yeah. And then he disappeared out on loan. So maybe the player, maybe the agent, maybe he's, because he's, you know, he wanted to go out to you Spain. I don't know. But, yeah. No, and that's that. That's the loan watch. This uh, this video is going to get demonetized because we said "kun" far too much on this podcast. <laughs> K-U-N. <laughs> it's too late. The YouTube people have heard it. Right. Uh, that's <laughs> that's probably all of our, everything for this week. We'll we will we will be back next week before the Villa game. Should we do a kind of see what happened with the a preview and a profile game? before the game? Yeah. 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 So we'll put a poll up. Look how well, well no, won't we? Because we Stoke might be celebrating the win. Yeah. yeah, Stoke on Monday. What a day Monday could be. Could be great. Yeah, we Pump, could. Um, beer gardens open, gyms open, 23s in the it. league. Brilliant. Yeah. What what a Monday. <laughs> I'm off Monday. I'll as be well. straight Fantastic. up the beer garden celebrating. <laughs> <laughs> if we do win the league before we play again, then maybe we'll get some guests back on the podcast, some previous guests to uh, talk about the season as a whole and that sort of stuff. But um, if people want to get involved with our poll, Matty, where do they? What Twitter account do they head to for that? LUFC Academy News, so at LUFC Academy News, uh, the account's called LUFC Academy Central, and then if you want to check out the website as well, uh, not a lot of content on there over the last couple of weeks, obviously with the break, but we'll be back with a match report, and you know if anyone's got any ideas, anything they want to see that maybe we don't talk about on here, or something we've mentioned and not gone into much detail, I can always write something up, so yeah, any ideas, just drop me a line on, on that account, or at Matty underscore 17 as well, so... Yeah, just drop me a line and we'll see what content is wanted. And if you want to get involved with the polls as well, get do do that as well because yeah. we'll have a player profile in the next week or so. Yeah, definitely. Um, Rob, where can they find you on Twitter? At Juicy Rob, J-U-C-E-E-R-O-B. I'm looking forward to not talking as much on the next podcast. Thank you. <laughs> that, that, uh, that Twitter handle is going to be explained if we were in the league, isn't it, Rob? Is that, uh, potentially. Is that the deal? Is that the deal? <laughs> Potentially. I'll leave yeah, you hanging. We'll keep that one fished out there. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Rosbo1984, making appalling dad jokes. Uh, that's pretty much what I do on Twitter these days. Um, you can find us as a podcast at Peacock's Raw. You can find us on YouTube at Raw and Peacock. You can subscribe, you can like, you can leave rates and reviews, everything. Just do it all. Just follow us on all of our content and rate and review us on all of it as well. We're fantastic. And um, we'll just keep doing it more and more and more. So, you may as well get on board now while we're still pretty small before we explode and you missed the boat. Um, so that is all from us this week. <laughs> it's goodbye from me. It's goodbye from Rob. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. And we'll see you next time. Most of our stats come from LUFC Stats or LUFC Data on Twitter. A very special thanks to Barney Stewart, Clifford Ewan and Howard Metcalf, Josh Pearson, Laura, Leon and Rob, The Light Show and all our family and friends. So many games to play, don't care what's on your mind